Hi and welcome to another episode of Jane of All Trades. Uh, we're going a bit different uh, t today. So what it is, is on YouTube you see a lot of reaction videos. So I have decided to learn slash do a reaction video. Uh, but unlike everyone else's videos, they re react to other things. So they'll, go and they'll react to other artists or other filmmakers or other YouTubers. Uh, I am going to react to songs that I wrote many moons ago. So that's anything from a teenager right through till maybe about 10 years ago. Um, I couldn't even tell you when the most recent one was, but it definitely wasn't within the past five years. So this is like five, a year, five years ago and back. Um, so the furthest being maybe about 20-ish years ago. Oh my god, it makes me, it makes me feel so old. Um, so uh, we're gonna kind of like listen to the track and uh, I've, I've chose a little handful of tracks. Um, and so we're gonna listen to those. Um, we're gonna kind of like scrutinising the, the recording, the vocal, the song itself. Um, and really kind of, you know, taking in what it's like to have evolved um, or to see that kind of evolution. I think any artist who has a bank of work um, eventually is going to be able to do the same. They're going to see th their early work compared to the work that they produce now and they're probably just going to drop dead going, oh my god, I can't believe I would ever make something like that. Um, whether it's just poor quality um, of a recording or of an item or whether it's like right through to like Ed Sheeran god awful couldn't sing absolutely horrendous and is now a multi-millionaire uh, award-winning artist so you just don't know when and where your old stuff is going to come back and haunt you um, for me it's not going to be the Jonathan Ross show um, thank goodness because uh, I, d I just don't think that it belongs on national television. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get my cue up my song. Um, and definitely my late teens, what I'm gonna advise you now is in my in my late teens, I knew a lot less about playing, not a trained musician, self-taught everything from keys to guitar, everything. Like I, I, I haven't taken a course in anything. Um, I didn't do anything um, training wise until I went to college and I done audio engineering so that is really you know learning to use learning recording software levels production um, editing that kind of thing um, that that was when I really started to actually learn I think this was in the early days of that I think I started recording in the very early days um, and the recording software that I had wasn't multi-track so what I used to do is I used to have my waveform, my waveform and then I would merge the next waveform on top of it and then I would merge the next waveform on top of that and really what you ended up with was something that you just it was all put together but you couldn't mix it after the fact if something was the wrong volume or something was too loud or something was too quiet uh, you really had to get that right before you overlaid it because you just ended up with one giant wave so that was all I had when I started. Um, I did have a multi-tracking program quite earlier on and it was, I think it was freeware or something that was relatively kind of cheap but for the life of me I could not remember the name of it. I can see it in my mind, you know that way where you can kind of remember what it looked like. I can remember that it was kind of blue and I can remember that you, you only had X amount of tracks that you could record on to you know it wasn't unlimited and and let's face it my computer it wouldn't handle that anyway um i had a like the very first laptop that i ever got was by a company called time and tiny um and we bought it from a uk store called tandy and i will tell you now neither of them exist anymore so that kind of goes to show um but I got a lot of years use out of that thing, um, but it, it wasn't designed for what I was using it for. So 
I suppose it kind of saw me through um, in the start. So we're going to get start reacting now. Um, so this first song that I've chosen is a song that I wrote and it's called Finally. And um, it is quite a depressing song. I was quite a depressed teenager. Um, uh, I, I had friends. I had good friends. Not a lot of them, but I had good friends. Um, but life was still just kind of hard. You know, nothing nothing never came easy to me. Um, learning did, but life didn't. Like, social scenarios, work, just life in general was not easy. Being out in the world, I just felt like I was constantly being judged and scrutinised and told that I wasn't good enough. So it was really, really hard to believe that um, I was good enough. And that's essentially what this song's about. Um, I'll pause it every now and again uh, because, again, it all comes down to quality in me. So as a vocalist, I wasn't very clear. I was such a lazy, lazy vocalist. Um, I did not enunciate or I would just kind of uh, down. And, and it just, it skews words, it skews syllables. So you probably won't understand a word I'm saying. So I will pause it every now and again and tell you what I just said if it's pretty indecipherable. Uh, so here we go. So this is a song called Finally. isn't that tragic um, and being in mind back then no auto tune or anything you know so so you can hear all the kind of the pitchy the uppy downy the tragic harmony that is going on 
um, and that hum in the background that you know that's you know the, the XLR free zone back then it was all jacks it was all jacks right next to electrical goods you know in the kitchen with the microwave going and the fridge rumbling and all that kind of jazz so you, you were really going to get all the hum and the tss that you could possibly muster um so i mean that that wasn't that wasn't too bad overall i mean the the lazy diction going on like, I, I lose my eye i literally said i lose my eyes i lose my eye. like that's just oh i just need to go <laughs> like so we're just gonna like really scrutinize it now I mean that's that's quite beautiful. See for somebody who never learned to play the piano, I think that sounds all right. Um, I couldn't play that for you now though, because I didn't actually know what I was doing then. So there's no way I'll know what I'm doing now. still quite smooth back then um, and I always felt like I was a, a, quite a flat singer. Very monotone, very blur, like drony. I've improved, like absolutely. Um, like there's, there's no doubt about it. Like I'm stronger. I've got more control. Um, the battery in my camera is about to run out. Um, but that's that doesn't matter. Um, also, like like the higher register is easier. So like I mean, I still have the same nasally tone. Like that's absolutely true. Like it's it's always been like that, um. But a uh, opening up in the higher register, like so. So now I would say that that kind of note was a lot easier, and I, I've definitely got a wee bit more headroom before that would actually start happening. So, uh, that song is definitely up there. I'm kind of very pleased with that one, um. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go away and I'm going to charge the battery in the camera and then we're going to move on to the next song uh, called Follow Me and it is definitely not the best recording ever but the reason I've chosen this one is because uh, of how this song came to be. Like, I mean, this, this is like absolutely me 
that I, I just go out there, I see something, and then I'm like, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do that, like, I'm going to build that. But not necessarily like a carbon copy. It's not like oh, I'm going to I'm going to do exactly what you did. That's not. It's like oh, I really like that. How can I utilize that? And the, and that's how this song was born. That was how this song was inspired and how it came to be. Um, and it was because I had seen this technique used, and I thought I am going to write a song using this technique. Um. So we'll, we'll be doing that next. So hopefully I'll be back in a. So I'm back with a fully charged battery, I'm pleased to say, and we were just talking about the next song there, which is called Follow Me. So we're just going to bash straight into that song. Um, again, very old excuse quality because we're going to be scrutinising that anyway, um, based on the equipment that we had at the time. Uh, so just before I start the song, uh, the inspiration, so it was about Christmas time. And that's usually when in Scotland we get all our traditional kind of music type thing on the TV, like all the time. So I was through in the kitchen, I was talking to my mum and on the telly was these two girls singing. And basically they were both singing the same song, but at different times. Um, and I was totally taken aback by how cool this was. Uh, remember, no internet, little bubble, little bubble. Um, so that was how you saw things. You saw things via TV or whatever. Uh, and I was like, oh my god, that's so cool. Imagine singing exactly the same song, but two different ways. It was like two different melodies at the same time. Um, and obviously there was harmonising going on. Um, and I just thought it sounded absolutely beautiful. I mean, obviously that was done in a more traditional sense. Um, so I immediately went, oh, I have to do this. I have to investigate this. Uh, so I went straight through to my room and started writing Follow Me, which is a guitar-based track. Um, and uh, later on down the line, I found out that there is a term for this kind of vocal style, uh, and it's called bullet vocals. So it's not like an echo or a reverb. Um, bullet is where, um, I guess, you, you shoot and then someone else shoots back. Um, but basically, it, lyrically, I did, you, you'll probably find that a, a lot of songs, I mean, I can I can hear songs that use a very similar kind of pattern um, to bullet vocals. They maybe don't do it for like a whole song or half a song, but very subtly. Um, and it's, it's, it's a beautiful technique. It's a beautiful way to write a song. I would love to write a song using exactly the same technique again because I really, really like it. So um, excuse the quality of this one and the fact that the guitar just is not tuned properly. Um, I guess I just didn't know what I was doing. Um, but here it goes, so let's scrutinise. I do 
like the track. review like guitar does not sound great at all it sounds very clunky and chunky um, and the reason for that is because it's a Takamine G series semi acoustic that I was playing at the time a, a guitar I still have 20 years later um, and I didn't have like um, I basically didn't have another mic I didn't have a guitar mic so to to make up make up what is essentially a beautiful sounding guitar I couldn't do that and therefore I did use the jack input I'm sure and that just makes it sound dead tangy and the fact that I hadn't I was maybe either on old strings because I didn't buy strings that often because I couldn't afford six pound a pop every time I wanted to change strings and um, sadly I have a really bad condition where I just get sweaty palms all the time so my strings would always rot really quickly like they would always be green and it, oh, you just don't even want to know um, so it was really bad so the strings used to go really bad really quickly and when they went like that they would just cut you like razors like it just wasn't nice to play at all so you know I was, I was really in a catch-22 when it came to guitar stuff um, so I'm sure that that was plugged in and then I was maybe using I don't know if I had the SM58 then or not or if I was using something different um, but definitely, like, I only, I only would have had one mic, so I had one mic to to record with. Um, so, like, we'll, we'll just review it again, like, so we'll just go back and we'll just have a quick once-over um, and kind of see, like, like, what would I change? What what would I take from this? Um, like, definitely that, that first note, that I... Like, I could probably do that better now. I think the, the shift between full voice head voice is kind of like it's a lot neater than I used to be
first attempt at bullet vocals, I'm still kind of learning how to record, lots of kind of hum and background noise. Again, it's another song, because I didn't know what I'm doing, I couldn't play that back to you again now. And really because the tuning of the guitar was literally made up, <laughs> I couldn't, like, it, I can tune a guitar now. So I could tune the guitar and I could play the same chords and it would just sound completely different. Uh, and again, you know, you're, you're really coming back to the fact that I didn't know what I was doing. Um, so the next one is was actually a good few years later. Um, we've moved house, we've moved on. Equipment has maybe changed, um, and I think I was still I was still at college at the time, so I was also really gaining more knowledge. So this song is a guitar song that I wrote about. So my favorite movie is Alien. So the song is called Nostromo, and basically it is the movie like uh, all the little choruses and the verses are just bits of the movie um so you'll probably hear that so uh, we'll just throw that on and we'll have a wee listen and i would say that maybe this kind of vocal representation is still kind of pretty similar to what i do now um i've maybe got a wee bit more of a poppy voice and a wee bit more of a run like voice I'm more inclined to kind of keep my voice moving around than back then when I keep it kept it pretty static so we'll just have a wee listen to this one and this is fun I've also got happier like when I wrote this I became happy so I stopped writing depressing songs so this one's the recording maybe a bit too bassy still but the guitar sounds a lot nicer it's tuned it doesn't sound dead clunky um, Venture inside, what a mistake to me. Fell in a pan with a misty. I got more interested in doing harmonies and backing vocals like this as well. I think I had multi tracking software, so I found it easier. What a way to go. So I multi tracked the guitar as well, so I guess like a backing guitar and a little kind of thing. Of that. Just to add a bit of interest. 80 years on, I think you'll find the nude in a box you left the cat behind. It's more than before, you're going out of your mind. The time around, we're stuck on the ground. There's not much you can know, there's one in you. Bishop's a creep, so you take the lead. Nostromo, what a way to go. It's just very simple, straight little vibrato, kind of not like Beyonce all over the shop. And that's 
what that's what I liked about it. It's supposed to be like that. The quality's way better, the vocal quality's way better. If you to go back into that now, using the vocal tracks, a machine with a heart, much more the world so the part after all that has changed. The ratings are the same, you'll never forget, no, you'll never forget what you know. I thought, just made it up. Nostromo. And I was making it up as I went along to the post to. I murdered the end um, but you absolutely get like the point absolutely awesome uh, so um, we're just moving on to the last song now um, you know we've kind of gone from pretty bad to getting there um, and we've got something quite recent I say it's quite recent I still think it's way over uh, five years old and then you know, and, and you know, you know, your tastes and your style change. I still love guitar. I still love acoustic guitar music. I still love like rock music. I, I love all music. If if it's good, good tunes is good tunes. It doesn't matter who writes it or what style it's in. It can be like crazy, crazy Mexican music for all I care. If it's a good tune, it's a good tune. And uh, so. Uh, the focus kind of shifted and we started doing kind of like dance and trance music. I started working with a fellow musician that I had met during college. Um, and so, so, so my kind of input into this was much more kind of vocal lyricism and the, the melody than the actual song itself. That was kind of more his back. He still does all that. Very successful musician. Um, you know, I'd love to work with him again. Plug, plug, plug. Um, and yeah, it just, it just, it's like another feather in the cap. It's like try something else. If you do acoustic guitar music all the time in one style, why would you do that? Like, why, why not try different styles and go? Oh, I love it when this style does this. But um, so I want to incorporate that into, you know, so, so if, if you learn different styles, if you branch out and you try different things, then you can you can almost start like plucking. I mean, that's how new genres are made all the time is because some goes, oh, my goodness, I absolutely love that. That's not my genre, though. Let's take that. Let's let's evolve it into something different and then let's incorporate that into what I'm doing now. So we're just going to go through a trance song yes it's trance um oh it was written in 2012 yes it was written in 2012 um i don't know why that is so specific i'm sure i'm just sure that it was 2012 um so that is still pretty old so we're still talking like eight eight years eight years old this song is um and this was when i was doing something different working on a different genre um, and here we go. I don't know if I'll play the whole thing. I think it's four minutes, this one. And again, it's vocally different. Sometimes I think I sound, I sound older. We don't have the time to let our hearts collide. I love doing that one.
pieces and my reaction is ooh, um, definitely not something that I would kind of like drag out and put on a CD that's for sure you know if you know in the day you become famous I think um, not unlike you read I think it's probably just going to stay in some file there just so that I can look back and have a laugh every now and again um, I think later on as the channel goes, I'll probably do something that's more recent. Um, my videos are going to include audio that I record just now, as well as just even me talking. So that already gives you an idea that I've learned a lot since then. That I mean, if you can record the speaky speaky, you can record the singy singy, um, and you can just you can just keep updating your equipment. It's not expensive. Um, I've got a, a dual mic set up right now, and both of those mics were eighteen pounds. And they're just camera mics, they're just like the rod ones, you know, the ones that they used to use in 40s Top of the Pops. If any of you are from the UK, uh, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It was almost like holding a little pen, like, and they would sing into a little pen like this. And it had no cable or anything, you know, like, did wireless even exist then? I, I honestly don't know. Um, but there was no way that they weren't lip syncing and that was a real microphone. Um, so so you, you don't need the big bucks. You don't need the big fast camera and you don't need the big fancy microphones you just uh, it just needs to be grounded like see as long as it's grounded and it's not got interference so that's that bzzz. and then when you record it you don't when you play it back you don't get tss, you, you're pretty much winning already because as soon as you get rid of all that rubbish um you, you're basically you've got like perfect audio to work with you can do crazy things you you can normalize it and you can um compress it so that it does it so it's not like loud and quiet and then loud and quiet um and you'll really get something better so whether you're making videos for youtube and you want better sound or whether you're a musician and you want better sound then just get out there and keep researching that equipment and don't you you know pew pew the the cheap equipment without trying it because that's how most of my equipment is. I, I can't believe it's so good for what I paid for it. And just because I took that chance on it and just went, do you know what? Let's just give it a shot. So before we go and spend thousands of pounds on an AKG or something, or a Sure This or a whatever that, um, we'll just kind of try the base spec stuff. So um, thanks for watching my uh, reaction video. Uh, it was a wonderful little trip down memory lane as well. And it's great to kind of look back on these things and uh, and remember how you got from there to how you got to here. Um, so that's great. So don't forget to like, subscribe, whatever you want to do. Um, I'm just having a great time making videos. Um, thank you and until next time, goodbye. <laughs>